What's up? Is that Godzilla? The Zilla? You're making a cameo appearance today? Oh, and he's got the bling. Everything bling bling. Oh, look, <laughs> it's dripping so. You know what I'm saying? Wow, look at this. It just got 10 degrees colder in this room. Ladies and gentlemen, nice. welcome back, Godzilla. What's up? Wow, we're going to have fun day. Right. We're going to have fun today. Oh, wait till I tell you about Navia. It's me, Mikey Pipes, with Godzilla, Gunzilla, and we are working on a heat pump pool heater, a Jandy, A-E-T-I, and we're getting an error, low ref, low ref, so it's an R22 system. See it right there. Let's take a peek while waiting for a compressor uh, timeout. Don't lose the screws. Let's not lose the screws. You know, I gotta love my working conditions sometimes, but you know what? I'm not complaining. It's better than an addict. No addicts today. That's my goal. No addicts. So right now I'm taking off the access panel and I want to get my refrigeration gauges for R22. All right, and we're gonna hook them up right there. There's my low side service port. There's my high side service port. Now if you take a quick look right away, I'm noticing some refrigeration oils right there. See that? Take a look at that, guys. I've got some oils right there. So, I'm gonna get my snip. I got this in the mail last week from Ellie Tech, all right? They make some cool stuff, right? Got a nice color display, all right? This is their IR200 infrared and heated diode refrigerant leak detector. So I'm gonna use this and we're gonna check out that service port which has all that oil residue on it. Let me squeeze back here again. There you go, Godzilla. Good. So we're still warming up, kind of hard to see, but seven seconds. Three, two. All right, so now it's on. Now let's take a peek. Pretty close over there. Not picking up anything. Mm -hmm. So it might have been when the last guy was here. I'm checking the charge. Oh. Uh oh. Look at that. It's picking up something there. Mm -hmm. Let's take off this service port cap. Oh, geez. Look at that. She's leaking. You can actually see the oils bubbling out of the strainer core. You see that, guys? Yeah. It's bubbling out right there. So sometimes it's nice to have cool tools, mm -hmm. but your the best tool ever is you're using your noggin yep. and using your eyes and being observant of your surroundings. Yes, sir. A good technician is observant of their surroundings. So now that this came on after a five-minute compressor delay. Uh -huh. I haven't even hooked up the gauges yet, but here we go. Fault, low ref pressure. Fault, low ref pressure. All right, cool. All right, uh, low ref pressure means low refrigerant pressure. Um, when I took the access panel off, I immediately saw some oil residue around one of the service ports. There's two service ports, a high and low side. I don't want to give you too much information, but it's good to educate you somewhat. Um, so I, I immediately saw oil residue on one of them. Mm -hmm. um, I got my electronic leak detector out mm -hmm. and actually it picked up more of a presence on the opposite side, on the low pressure side. But as soon as I took the cap off the high pressure side, oil is coming out of the straight, straighter core. Okay. A straighter core is similar to, it's identical to a car tire. We add the air, mm -hmm. identical. So 
it may be the only leak, but I'm going to recommend we take out both cores, mm -hmm. replace them, and then we'll leak test again. Your biggest expense here, though, is refrigerant. Yeah, okay. R22 is phased out. They don't make it anymore. Okay. Um, it's expensive. We charge $200 a pound for it. Okay. Your system came charged with 4.5 pounds of it. The fact that it, and I hadn't checked pressures yet, but the fact that it immediately, like within seconds, goes to that error at compressor, compressor startup mm -hmm. means you're very low. Mm -hmm. um, the only way to know exactly how low you, your system is is that we suck out what you have and weigh it out, and then we add exactly what it came with. It's 4.5 uh, pounds. Mm -hmm. So factoring that with labor, you know, you're over $1,000 yeah. just for that right there alone. Kind of an old heater to put that kind of money into it. Yeah. So alternatively, you know, get yourself, if, like you said, if it's an older heater, alternatively, get yourself a new heat pump that uses R410A or maybe even natural gas if you feel like running a, a line over there. Um, but definitely R410A, but yeah, definitely go with R410A. But again, these pool heaters are expensive. Yeah. And right now, good luck finding one. Yeah. All right. So not the answer that everyone was looking for, but listen. You gotta be diligent, you gotta be aware of your surroundings. And here we have this Jandy R22 pool heater heat pump that realistically probably needed about three pounds, three and a half pounds, because she only ran for about 10 seconds before going off on low pressure. And when you factor in the cost of refrigerant and labor, it's not cost effective. Now, listen, if you're a DIY guyer, or a professional and you have access to R22, you know, an abundance of it, and you know how to replace those two Schrader cores, you know, it's a no-brainer. You could be done with this job in under an hour, right? Just topping it off, but topping it off is not the right way of doing it. You gotta recover what's in there, weighing it out, right? Which will probably take maybe half an hour, yeah. maybe, all right. And then if you're gonna do that, you should also leak test to make sure there are no other leaks in it. You know, you have to do that. And yes, it's a small self-contained system and maybe you can pressurize the 200 PSI and see if it doesn't drop, you know, in maybe two hours or an hour. Or if, it, or if there's other leaks, you know, yeah. you'll see it right away. But, you know, you could be there for a couple hours or, or overnight. So if you're a professional doing this job, you know, can weigh in the facts and make the customer aware that it may not be cost effective to make repairs. If this is an R410A system, yeah, it's a drastic difference, you know. R410A is readily available and it's dirt cheap. Doesn't matter what the selling price is, or what you, it's what the cost of uh, to acquire that refrigerant is. So, just my two cents. You know, I told them, hey listen, don't even bother putting any money into this. Just pay me for my time, the service call, and uh, good luck finding a new unit because of you yeah. know, supply constraints right now so due crazy. to, uh, you know, no one wants to work, so no, our factories aren't making equipment. Yeah. <laughs> All right, stay tuned for the next one. Be well.